Hi, welcome to the Brief Book Reviews channel, otherwise known as an old guy reviews the book that he's read this week. So what's the old guy read this week? Well, the book I've read this week is The Exchange by author John Grisham. Uh, it was released as a hardback here in the UK on the 17th of October 2023, 334 pages. Um, Regular viewers of the, the channel will probably realise that I'm a fan of John Grisham, so it's probably best that I put that out there to start off with. I've read most of Grisham's book. He is the master of the legal thriller and uh, was looking forward to this one coming out. So what's this one all about, I hear you say? Well, it's a return for Mitch, Mitch McDear, last seen 15 years ago in Grisham's breakout novel, The Firm. At the end of that book, Mitch was on the run from the mob swindled 10 million dollars from them and uh, clearly they weren't happy about that so what's mitch up to now well 15 years later you know mitch went on the run for a while with his wife abby and eventually ended up in london managed to get a job with a, a law firm in london called scully and pershing and is now working for them as a, he's made his way up to partner in uh, in new york he's actually done very well for himself uh, him and Abby live in uh, New York. They've now got two sons, twins. Uh, he says, checking his notes, Carter and Clark. Sounds like a firm of English solicitors, but hey, that's by the by. And they're having a nice life. You know, Abby works as a book editor in the uh, the cooking recipe field. Her, her firm publishes publishes cookbooks, etc. So they've always got lots of people cooking for them, and they're in the, their apartment, and they're they're living quite a good life. So the, the tale unfolds where, where Mitch is invited to attend a meeting with Jack, the, uh, the managing partner of uh, Scully and Pershing, and knows that if he's, he's getting a tug from the managing partner, there's clearly something that needs doing that uh, needs a bit of experience, and sure enough it is. Jack explains that there's a Turkish construction company called Lanak that are a, a big customer of Scully, and they've got a problem in Libya. They've taken on a project to build a bridge for the Libyan government. And this is at the time of Colonel Gaddafi, uh, when things are you know, somewhat turbulent in, in Libya. And it turns out that the, the grand plan to divert, divert waterways to, uh, to go under the bridge has turned out to be a non-starter. The first person that told Gaddafi this is a bad idea and ends up getting shot. Nobody else wants to tell him. And they end up with a, effectively a bridge to nowhere. Uh, Lanak are trying to get money out of the Libyan government to pay for all their work. The Libyan government are playing hardball, which apparently is, is the way they do things. But it's a $400 million case and it needs to be taken to the Court of Arbitration in Geneva. And uh, Jack thinks that Mitch is the ideal guy for the job. Mitch isn't too keen about going to Libya, but he's, uh, he's told that there will be security provided. And generally, the Libyans look after Western contractors because they need their skills and expertise. So Mitch has to pick a, a couple of people to go and help with it, help him. And one of those is called Giovanna, a lady called Giovanna Sandroni, who's the daughter of Luca Sandroni, uh, a, a firm uh, based in Rome that Scully took over years ago. Uh, Giovanna is working in the uh, London office of Scully. And whilst her father certainly helped her get a position, she's generally regarded as a really, really good lawyer. So, so Mitch thinks this will be great experience for her. Unfortunately, whilst they're, they're in Libya, they go to Libya to, to suss out what's going on, to see the bridge. Giovanna is um, captured. She's kidnapped by, by terrorists. And these are brutal terrorists. They also have killed Libyan uh, soldiers and they've killed you know, the Turkish uh, support team that are looking after them. So that's the tale unfolds, and it's um, a tale of Mitch and a race against time to, uh, to pay the ransom. The kidnappers asked for a hundred million ransom, uh, and that is, is the gist of the tale. The, the tricky bit for Mitch is that his wife Abby has become involved. The kidnappers have contacted Abby and are using her as a point of reference for their negotiations. Um, they've shown Abby photos of her. Mitch, her family, and it's clear that not only is Giovanna uh, under great, great threat, so is Mitch and his family. So that's the tale in a nutshell. Um, it's Grisham, it's well written, it rolls on well. Um, there's no fantastic twist or turn, it's just a, a race against time. It's Mitch in his private jet, glow popping basically, getting lots of people involved. 
getting governments, getting private contractors, getting all sorts of people to try and find out what's happened to Giovanna and to try and raise the 100 million. So, you know, we end up with Mitch Graham from New York to London to Rome to Tripoli, obviously, to Marrakesh and even ended up in a place he's been before, Grand Cayman. So uh, a good ripping yarn. Um, I think regular readers of Grisham may be a little bit disappointed in the fact there's no courtroom drama here. Grisham's normally the expert at telling a courtroom drama, you know, the ebb and flow of a court case, the, uh, the chicanery going on behind the scenes with lawyers and witnesses. There's none of that in this book. There's a very brief uh, appearance at the Court of Arbitration by Mitch. But that, apart from that, it's just a stand, standard, you know, good guys chasing bad guys trying to get back the, uh, the, the lady that's been kidnapped. It's, it's well written. Uh, it moves quite quickly. I did feel there's a couple of loose ends that haven't really been tied up. And you know, frankly, I think we'll be seeing more of Mitch and Abby. Um, but it was good enough tale. I just didn't think it was one of Grisham's best. I have to say that. Um, but on itself, as I said, it's 334 pages. I'd give it 7 out of 10. It's Grisham. It's always well written. Just not, not, not one of his best. Um, I prefer the courtroom drama side. But it's a good enough tale to read you know, as a, as a, a one-off tale. Um, and that's it for this week's brief book review. Uh, 10.10, till we do it again. Thanks for watching.